Okay, welcome to another edition of the Leukemia Tapes. Again, so-called because I'm being treated for chemotherapy with chemotherapy at Vanderbilt Medical Center for Acute Leukemia. This is Faith and Works Part 6. There wasn't going to be a Part 6. Um, but I really want to give a picture of what I'm talking about. One of the things, you know, a long time ago I started writing down verses on works in the New Testament, trying to figure out how that fit in with Verses like Ephesians 2.8 that says, For by grace are you saved through faith, that, of not, that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, should it, lest any man should boast. One of the things that got me to understand how Paul talks about faith for us being born again and works for us going through the judgment and into the kingdom of heaven was a statement from one of the early Christian writings, one of the earliest ones that there is. It's an anonymous letter to Diognetus. And it has a statement concerning why God had the law, where men were under the law, before he sent Christ. And he said he, he did that so that we would be convinced of our inability to do what's good on our own. And then he says, once we were convinced that we are unworthy to attain life through our own works, it would now, by the kindness of God, be bestowed on us. Once it became obvious that in ourselves we were unable to enter the kingdom of God, the power of God would then make us able. That's the idea of faith. You enter into grace, and by grace you stand in it, and grace makes it so sin will not have power over you, Romans 6, 14. Romans 7 describes how we can't do what's good walking in the flesh, but Romans 8 has the answer to it in this incredible passage in verses 3 and 4. What the law could not do, it couldn't deliver us from the power of the flesh. In that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. As Galatians says, if you walk according to the Spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. And again, in Galatians 5.25, it says that those that are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Now that's scary to us. It's very scary. Am I, you know, have I crucified my flesh? But we need the promise that we can walk in the Spirit because Jesus didn't die to change the judgment. There is still a judgment. It is still according to works. God is a just judge. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can walk in the Spirit and the mercy of God and get through that judgment and enter the kingdom of heaven. That is the description and the promise of the New Testament.